Kratos in the Norse realm is so powerful that we see him not only rotate a massive steel bridge that is confirmed to weigh double the weight of the Golden Gate Bridge for a maximum weight of 3,911,000,000 pounds or 1,774,000,000 kilograms, but he also pushes it through the water, with water being around 800 times denser and 55 times more viscous than air. So Kratos is overcoming some pretty serious drag forces here. We then see Kratos flip Tyr's giant temple, vault, gold, and death traps included in a massive roundabout. And not knowing how much the temple weighs exactly, if for a fun estimate, much like the weight of the temple's bridge being twice the weight of the Golden Gate Bridge, seeing how Tyr's temple is a large metal structure, let's then double the weight of the largest temple in the world, being Angkor Wat, which reportedly used 5 million tons of sandstone in its construction, making it weigh 10 billion pounds or over 4.5 billion kilograms. And this would give Kratos a deadlifting strength of 20 billion pounds or 9 billion kilograms. And seeing how canonically Kratos' strength is supposed to rise to match whatever situation he's facing, this tracks. And this feat makes Kratos dragging and carrying a large 7,000 pound or 3,200 kilogram soaking wet tree throwing a ballpark 700,000 pound or 300,000 kilogram boulder, give or take a few, and as we saw down in heck, lift off the bow of a large viking ship that could weigh something like 5 to 10 tons, pretty light for the guy. When Kratos fights the god Baldur, we see the two of them not only punching each other so hard as to literally fly around in the air, but Kratos rams Baldur through a small mountain with a tree, exerting something in the tens of thousands of pounds pounds, like 50,000 pounds, or 23,000 kilograms of force, if not creeping into the hundreds of thousands for all the stony shatters, with Baldur then hurling a near 2 million pound or 900,000 kilogram rock at Kratos, the two of them then end up in a deadlock, pushing against one another in an epic shot that forms a canyon and causes a distant mountain to break in half. This feat of strength between these two gods would see them having a combined force of something in the high 10 tens of millions of newtons, like a hundred million newtons, or generally the force needed to launch a small 90 million pound or 41 million kilogram mountain through the air at someone. When it comes to Kratos' striking ability, we see him not only able to easily carve his way through trees and solid stone, and send most any enemy he faces, like trolls, ogres, and large steel gates flying back a hundred feet or 30 meters, but Kratos is extremely skilled at hand-to-hand -hand combat, being practiced at boxing, called pygmatia, pole or ancient Greek wrestling, pancreation that combines striking and joint locks as we see Kratos put Baldur in a rear naked choke before snapping his neck, as well as being a Spartan that trained through the Agoge, Kratos is highly trained in weapons, mainly being the spear, sword, and shield. In the Norse series, we see Kratos use the Leviathan Axe, crafted by the Holdra brothers, to oppose Mjolnir. The axe can be recalled by Kratos from any distance, and is renowned for freezing anything it strikes instantaneously, showing that the blade of Kratos' Leviathan Axe in these freezing instances must be hitting numbers close to, if not at the coldest possible temperature in the universe, otherwise known as absolute zero. But as we know from liquid nitrogen and the food industry, temperatures close to or at absolute zero will still take several minutes to freeze something solid, meaning that Kratos' Axe is somehow how colder than absolute zero, so it has some pretty serious freezing magic behind it. The axe even instantly freezes lightning, another scientific impossibility to show just how awesome it is. Kratos also has the self-replicating Dropnir Spear, made from the Dropnir Ring that he can explode and use to completely overpower a future seeing Heimdall, and he has his iconic Blades of Chaos, that being imbued with primordial fire are said to be greater than anything the Holger brothers have ever made, and thus any other weapon we see the Norse gods wield. These blades allow Kratos to not only easily melt his way through anything, with a fire that's as hot as the Leviathan axe is cold, but also create explosions and grab objects sitting 15 meters or 50 feet away if not more. Kratos is so durable as to be able to fall hundreds of feet or meters onto stone or metal and be fine. He is seemingly unbothered by the extreme 
extreme cold and blizzards of Midgard in winter, as he almost never wears a shirt, and he can take on the blistering cold of Heck, a freezing chill that is so bad that pretty much any other god like Odin are said to not be able to withstand it. And we see that Kratos can actively heal any wound he sustains if he focuses, but way more notably, he takes blows from Thor's hammer, Mjolnir, a hammer that is so powerful as when swung by Thor, it can both shake and splinter Yggdrasil, opening up a hole in the Nine Realm Holding Tree that was able to send the serpent Jormungandr back in time to a period long before its birth. A time-shattering feat that if Jormungandr the Serpent does in fact circle the globe, this would see Thor somehow hitting our 24,901 mile or 40,074 kilometer long and 3 mile or 5 kilometer wide serpent with something akin to the force needed to create a wormhole, or basically bend space-time between two separate points, requiring such enormous amounts of energy that is currently unknown to us. But some scientists say that opening up a wormhole big enough for a human to step through would require the energy equivalent of a small star such as our sun. So in this instance, comparing Jormungandr's size to that of a regular human being something in the realm of 23.5 to 24 billion times bigger means that he is being hit with approximately the power of 24 billion suns. And Kratos just takes this to the face like a champ. He even strikes the hammer out of Thor's hand and manages to grab onto this unstoppable hammer mid-flight, halting it. Eventually, with the help of Freya and his son, Kratos takes down the most powerful of the Norse gods, Odin, who long ago, with the aid of his magic, killed the first giant Ymir, creating Midgard, or the Earth, out of his body. But as powerful as Kratos is, he does have his own limits and weaknesses. Just like me, trying to somehow simplify some pretty insane research on how we don't actually know anything about wormholes, or how two men can possibly create a canyon via arm wrestling. Since the first series, Kratos has come a long way in his feelings of isolation and psychological trauma for accidentally killing his wife and daughter. And throughout the series, Kratos pushes to hold himself back, to place a limit on the anger that drove him and thus his strength. A limit that would cause him to eventually die to the prophecy if he didn't entirely change. And this made it so that this time the only way that Kratos could move forward and defeat someone like Odin without dying is with the help of many other people. But if none of this was very interesting, then I saved an interesting fact for last. By the time of God of War Ragnarok, Kratos is estimated to be somewhere just over 1,000 years old, having been in Midgard for something like an estimated 150 years, where his strength may have actually increased from his days living in Greece. But if you really want to know if young Kratos is actually more powerful, then check out this video where we go over the science behind his insane feats. See you in the next one.